Biden in Chicago on Wednesday touting, he says, the success of Bidenomics, its impact across the country, including in the state of Maryland, where private companies so far have announced investments totaling $1 billion. Meanwhile, in the public sector, Maryland is experiencing a surge of investments in the state's infrastructure. And joining us now to talk about those investments and much more, Democratic Governor Wes Moore. He's also a member of the Biden-Harris 2024 Campaign National Advisory Board. Governor, it is great to see you again. Uh, talk us through, if you can, what's great happening you. in your state, in Maryland. We're looking at all of these data points, historically low unemployment nationally, inflation beginning to tick down, and now you have the President of the United United States going out and saying, hey, things are getting better out here. And yet, when you look at the way the country feels about Biden's handling of the economy, those numbers are very low. So let's bring it down to the state level. How are things looking there? Yeah, it's, it's important that people understand that, that progress is not inevitable and that it happens because we're intentional and we're deliberate about what we're investing in. And the things that we're seeing here in the state of Maryland in partnership with the Biden administration is that we're investing in the things that work and the things where you're investing in the future, you're actually producing the results for now. So, for example, you know, we're investing in, in mass transit and infrastructure, where just in our first weeks, we're able to stand with the president in Maryland uh, to announce uh, an investment in the Frederick Douglass Tunnel that's going to produce 30,000 jobs in the state of Maryland. We announced that we're putting the Red Line project back on track, which is a east-west transit that's going to connect people to opportunity in the Baltimore region. That we just uh, received a grant from the federal government for $267 million because I made a pledge to the, pe to the people of my state that by the end of my terms, I want to make sure that we are fully wired in terms of internet access and Wi-Fi. And this investment by the federal government is going to make that happen. And so we're investing in infrastructure. We're investing in people by job retraining and job reskilling. Just yesterday, I was with uh, the, the president's senior advisor for climate change, Ali Zaidi, in Baltimore for a retrofitting, a home retrofitting project that we're investing in together and in giving individuals a pathway to work wages and wealth and making sure we're reducing barriers for businesses, for them to be able to grow and thrive and making our state more competitive. So the numbers don't lie. We're seeing a measure of economic growth that's happening in the state of Maryland. Three straight months of record low unemployment in the state of Maryland. But it's because we're moving in partnership with the federal government and with the Biden administration to make sure that we're being deliberate and intentional about making those results stick. So, Governor, good morning. Uh, you just went through uh, the progress being shown there in your state and, and certainly uh, a lot of uh, positive numbers economically, na nationally as well. But poll after poll suggests that voters still don't feel great about the economy, that they feel like something's, something's off. They, they real have real worries. And also polls suggest, including one by Gallup just a few days ago, that they trust Republicans on the economy more than Democrats. What do you make of that? And what can your party do to turn around those numbers. Well, for people who express frustration, uh, I, I think we have to acknowledge that frustration is real. Um, and, 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 it's, and it's underscored by, I think, a lot of not just historic but present challenges that we've had in the economy. We can't forget about what we just come out of. We can't forget about not just the economic but the psychological damage that has happened to the average worker. I see it in Maryland every single day, going from western Maryland to the eastern shore, from northeast Maryland to southern Maryland, and everywhere in between. So it is real, and we have to acknowledge it. The thing that I would also say is when people are looking at how we're moving here in the state of Maryland and moving in partnership with the Biden administration, we're producing results, that the plan that we have is actually making sure we're focusing on job retraining and job reskilling, knowing that we have some of the best four <clears throat> institutions in America here in the state of Maryland, but not every one of our students need to attend one. And we're going to focus on things like creating pathways for them to enter into a workforce, that Maryland is the first state in the country now to offer a service year option for our high school graduates, to give them an opportunity to have both experiential learning and knowing that this gives a financial cushion for them as they're entering out of high school knowing that we can do things like build up and actually invest in neighborhoods and invest in communities in a way that's helping to address public safety. And what we're seeing, frankly, from the other side oftentimes is not a plan. It's just simply a playbook. And the playbook is to tell people how bad things are and then to tell people that you're the only ones that can solve it. What we're seeing right now is actually a plan that's being delivered and is having real results. Governor Al Sharpton, uh, I, I want to ask you Good at this you, point, uh, you, you're the only uh, black governor in the, in the country. Uh, I, I would be very interested in knowing your reaction to the Supreme Court decision yesterday on affirmative action. 
particularly since I know your background of having worked with a lot of young people and, and, and tried to gear them toward getting a higher education. You and I have worked together before you were governor in some That's of those right. areas, so I know firsthand your sensitivity there. I also want uh, to uh, put in uh, my question, uh, as governor, as you bring in all of this infrastructure money and others that the Biden-Harris administration has gotten through, you also wanted to have a fair amount of black and brown businesses be able to have access to contracts. Does this ruling That's right. that race is unconstitutional chill some of those efforts in fear that you might, the state might get sued if they have a certain target and therefore uh, has to back up, even though they did nothing to legacy uh, 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 people that had affirmative <laughs> legacy uh, uh, advances in education. It seems that th th they've done a devastating blow. I'd be interested in your reaction to both of those questions. Thanks, Rev. And, and, and you're right. I mean, this decision is not surprising by any stretch of the imagination when you know this court. I mean, elections have consequences. Uh, but the thing that we know, even though it's not surprising, it's still deeply frustrating and maddening. Uh, the fact that, that the Supreme Court, I mean, the Constitution is supposed to be a living document that, that, that continues to grow to open up opportunity for people. Right, that, that uses the Constitution and legal basis to be able to see more people and to live up to the, to the inherent values of this country. And we're watching how this court is using it as a document to restrict, using it as a document to pull back. And, and this decision is, is no different. And the thing that I know is, you know, I have spent uh, not just the past 24 hours, but even before them, because we anticipated that this court would make this decision, speaking with leaders in higher education all throughout the state of Maryland. And we stand united in saying that we believe that our institutions of higher education should be important and representative mosaics of our society. And that if you really want to use them for what they're for, which is preparing people for the world that they will inherit, it means making sure that your campus exists exemplifies and demonstrates the beautiful diversity of the environment that they are going to walk into once they leave that campus. So we, we are, we are com committed to it. We also know that we are already working to make sure that this will not have any forms of chilling impacts on the progress that we are already making in terms of making sure that there's minority business participation, women business participation, and veteran business participation in the economic growth and the economic engine that's happening right now in the state of Maryland. And as Rev mentioned, Governor Moore spent his career before he was elected governor in poverty fighting and in education, so he knows of what he speaks. Democratic Governor of Maryland, Wes Moore, always great to have you on the show. Thanks for being here. Happy 4th to you and your family.